Hello, and welcome to the weekly broadcast of Strategic Speaking for Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman, your host. And today we're talking about how can you make imposter syndrome into an asset? Now, we've all got those voices in our heads from childhood that say, oh, don't do that, be safe. Uh, you know, everybody has imposter syndrome as you are stretching. You know, remember, imposter syndrome is a sign that you're stretching out of your comfort zone. So the question is, how can you recognize it and perhaps see the good side of imposter syndrome, the part that maybe you hadn't thought of? I always go back to Maya Angelou saying every time she has put out yet another book and waiting for someone to say, wait, who are you? How, what makes you the person that we should listen to? So if even the great Maya Angelou felt that, we know that we all have imposter syndrome. It can be something that motivates you, which is where it's an asset. If feeling like your skills don't measure up is that gets you to say, take a course or look for a mentor or take a little time to analyze where you are perceiving a gap between your skills and what should be happening, then it's a good thing. More often, however, it shows up in a couple of ways, um, chiefly in either perfectionism or paralysis. Perfectionism is where you think, oh dear, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. I just have to be better. I have to work harder. I have to get this project absolutely right or get this report absolutely right. And then you never actually finish it or you never reach out and say, yes, I would be like to be the one who speaks because I'm not completely ready. Uh, as a podcast host and a speaker trainer, I speak to people who put on events, we're looking for speakers all over the world. And I'm often, I'm saying, why don't you have more women? And the answer usually is, we'd love to have more women, but when you call them up, they say, oh no, I'm not ready. You know, the women tend to wait until we're 150% ready. That's imposter syndrome. That's the self-doubt that's stopping, stopping us. The other side of that is paralysis, which is one that I know very well. If, if I don't really know how I'm going to tackle a problem or writing an article, for instance, this week, how do I actually get it started? Where does it go? I can put it off until tomorrow or the next day or the next day, and then it never actually gets done. Here's the thing. First of all, reach out to your allies. I have accountability partners who check with me. I say, I need to get this article finished. I don't know how to start it. And so we can talk through it until I found the thread that's going to undo the tangle. Or um, partners who I'll say, I say, I will give it to you. I will give this report to you, even though it's not completely finished, because uh, otherwise I'll never finish it. So um, I'm really good at getting things done only 95% and then not getting the rest. So perfectionism and paralysis have an ally who will hold you accountable, who will say, it's fine. Have an ally who say, you're really good at this. Why are you why are you worrying about it? Who will for me at least get me out of my own head and try to be a little bit more um a little bit more objective. For this conversation, I did reach out to a couple of allies. And one of the things I was thinking was Maybe I could reframe imposter syndrome, these voices in my head, as a signal. It's a signal to say, okay, I'm reaching out of my comfort zone. And if I'm having these, this negative self-talk, then it's a signal to reach out for help, to ask somebody to, to balance what I'm doing. 
So I reached out to Denise Brosseau, who is the head of the Thought Leadership Lab and one of the most brilliant people I know. And she said, she doesn't like the, she said the idea, if you put it as imposter syndrome, it is putting the burden on us. We are the person who shouldn't be there. So she thinks about it as reminding ourselves that we're always still listening. And she said, we're always still learning rather. Rather than think that you're an imposter when you're in a new job or an unfamiliar situation, realize you just have more to learn. And that's a good thing. Or even if you've been in a job for a long time and you're around a, a lot of really smart, capable folk, you might feel like you're not keeping up. That doesn't mean you're an imposter. You just have more to learn. Remember, you have skills that they don't have. That's the part we often tend to forget. We just focus on the others being so much better. And Jen Koken, who is one of my chief allies and who talks a lot about battling imposter syndrome, Jen was a guest on my podcast a little while ago. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes here. And she said, it doesn't matter what level of success you get to. We all still have doubts and questions. It's just the brain doing its thing. The better question is, what are you going to be committed to? Your commitment to show up as a leader, to be caring, compassionate, playful, reverent, smart, and contagiously joyful? Or are you going to be more committed to beating yourself up? I love that. So I invite you, I invite all of us to embrace the negative voices as just childhood leftovers who are trying to keep us safe, who haven't recognized that we're adults now, but not let them define us. Let's reframe the doubts and keep on learning. Let's commit to joy. This has been Strategic Speaking for Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman. I'll see you on the next one.